So I was finishing up CES and I already recorded a video of the best things I saw at the event. Uh, but then I went to watch the video back and there was this like horrible mic noise. Like I bought this microphone here and this is probably the worst thing of CES is I paid 110 bucks for it. And now it has a really good capsule on it. But the problem is, is that when you're recording the audio, even the slightest uh, sensitivity to the cable itself will then introduce a massive amount of noise. And I mean, this shouldn't be happening on a microphone that you pay $110 for, especially when the company's called the Sound Professionals. So uh, whatever they did, they put a cable on this thing and I'll let you take a listen to it. So there's just some crazy noise that goes through the microphone the moment you touch it or even just move positions. So I can't vlog with this microphone at all in its current state. Probably have to change the cable around. But all that aside, let's finally sit down and discuss what was the best things I saw at CES 2019. So CES 2019 was scattered into a lot of different sections. Uh, there was some massive showroom floors at the Venetian Hotel, uh, but then also different companies, especially enthusiast tech companies, had their booths uh, situated at hotels that were sort of kind of in yonder. So it took a little while to go to some of those booths, uh, but on the main showroom floor, I did manage to go to the automotive section where I think I saw the coolest thing I've seen in a long time, and that was this massive drone-like um, helicopter thing it was called the Bell Nexus and it had six engines on it and I guess it's the future of uh, uh, vehicles where we where are currently just land traffic and every city I guess every major city in the world's getting congested uh, so this I guess will alleviate that problem if we can start flying so it looked really cool I have no idea how much it costs but uh, seeing this thing was just unbelievable and then moving through the health section, I actually came across some really cool things. I did this health check where it took me 15 minutes and it cut off all the circulation in my right arm. And then it measured the temperature of my left finger versus my right finger. And then once the pressure was released after five minutes, it uh, measured how quickly that temperature rose back to being close to the other temperature. And so this essentially coupled with a blood pressure test gives you an idea of how healthy you are uh, I managed to get above average, but admittedly I haven't been exercising for a little while and the lady did admit that cardiovascular exercise was super important. Uh, so apparently that gives you a 30, if you exercise in the morning for example, that gives you like a 30% boost in blood flow or so, something close to there for the rest of the day. So I was like, damn, one thing I realized uh, out of that test was to just keep doing cardiovascular exercise. Now, if you're into getting a good night's sleep or if you can't get a good night's sleep, I saw this device uh, where you put it on your head and then it measures your brain waves and the energies and stuff like that. And you can actually map uh, over three months, that's what the recommended period is, uh, all the sleep patterns you go through. And so you can sort of uh, correlate what mood you're in and what you're thinking of with how you're sleeping and so I thought this is really cool because sometimes I can't get a good night's sleep it's just there's either a lot of stress on my mind anxiety or I'm hungry or something like that so this thing will give you data over the long run and then let you know what you need for a best night's sleep whether it just be eat a massive burger before you go to bed which does the trick for me uh, but some of this other stuff it's interesting to definitely put that into practice and see what would help me sleep in the long run. Now, of course, getting back to enthusiast tech, there was so many different things on display. Uh, I did see a 256 gigabyte uh, DIMM from Samsung. That's all that memory in one stick. Uh, this was a registered ECC DIMM. However, it's just cool to see that much memory. I mean, imagine having a two slot mini ITX PC, potentially with 512 gigabytes of RAM. That would be pretty crazy. So. Uh, that was definitely on display, as well as the big announcements from AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA. Uh, Intel talked about their 10 nanometer, which is quite some time away still yet. Uh, they're definitely going to release that later in the year. Uh, AMD promised their Ryzen 3000 series CPUs for the mid-year, and I was super excited about this because they had a single uh, die solution for 8 cores rather than using two CCXs 
or two die, uh, what they've done in the past with the Ryzen 1000 and 2000 series. Now people are saying there are traces on that PCB to accommodate another eight cores. Uh, what AMD intends to do with this, no one exactly knows just yet. Of course, a 16 core part would be great, uh, but me personally, I was super excited about a low latency single uh, die eight core solution. This really uh, got me excited because personally, I'm a big fan of a lot of actions per minute and low latency. Also continuing on with AMD's keynote was the Radeon 7, uh, which is their new flagship graphics card intended to be better value than the previous Vegas 56. And then also out of Nvidia's camp was the RTX 2060. Uh, now I was excited when I talked about both these graphics cards. Of course, their new graphics cards are gonna be bringing better value to the market than their predecessors. Uh, but of course, I do agree with you guys in the comments. They're not like super innovative. Both these graphics cards aren't offering more value than say a 1060 was to a 960 or a Vega 56 was to an R9 390 or something like that. I mean, the price performance differences, especially for the time we've been waiting, certainly isn't nothing to get excited about, but it doesn't change the fact that these graphics cards are still going to be better value at their new price points than the predecessor's graphics cards were. So basically when it comes to politics with enthusiast tech companies, I don't really want any part of it. I'm just gonna get the product and review it for its merits. Which in the case of the RTX 2060 and the Radeon 7, I look forward to covering for you guys. Now moving on to the MSI booth, this was where I saw some really cool monitors. They had a 5K ultra wide display and they're using, I think they said nano IPS, as well as promising lower response times than previous generation of IPS panels. I think they're saying five milliseconds. Uh, but besides that, they also had a 1440p ultra wide panel with 144 hertz. This was 34 inch and they said one millisecond MRPT or something to do with that terminology in response times. Uh, so it looks like they've gone away with the gray to gray response times. Uh, but of course the uh, 1000 FPS camera never lies. I told them I'll look, be looking forward to reviewing one of these monitors which will be out in mid year uh, in 2019. So you can expect it in June or July uh, but it's definitely looking good for MSI for them to get into monitors, but also hit hard with some really good specs. Now, if you're into RGB LED lighting, then Corsair had on display the Capellix RGB lights. Uh, this is essentially shrinking your traditional 50-50 RGB lighting and making it very small. So they can put so many more RGB LED lights in a smaller space, and it's also more efficient, uh, better power consumption, so they can uh, essentially put out less heat for the same amount of lights that you'd have in your case, as well as being able to do a lot more unique things. Uh, for instance, they had their Dominator memory, the newest version on display, and that had just really cool lighting effects going through it, as well as having a new design. As for audio and PC lovers all in one, Creative had their Super XFi headphone amp, which was really good. This thing pretty much made headphones come to life, like a 5.1 and 7.1 speaker setup. Uh, and then they also had at the same booth the A9 sound card, which they, they were teasing. And they definitely said I'll be able to get on hands on with that when it's released and give you guys a day one review. So definitely looking forward to that. But that's about it for CES 2019. There was a lot of cool products there, a lot of refreshes, a lot of improvements coming for 2019. Some of which would just extend this video out way too much. But that was definitely some of the coolest stuff that I saw that sort of just made me open my eyes. Uh, blew me away. Um, of course, some of the other stuff they had there was just a lot of fluff in my opinion. They had so many different things that I just looked at and I was like, yeah, that doesn't really interest me. Uh, they even had a toilet on display, uh, which got an innovation award. So, I mean, for me personally, a toilet's a toilet. I just do my thing on it, but <laughs> I guess CES seems to think that that was a uh, really cool product. Anyway guys, that's it for CES 2019. I hope you have enjoyed all the coverage that I've brought to you guys. There wasn't a whole lot of it, unfortunately, because I did have to run around uh, from one hotel to the other and it was just super busy. Uh, it's definitely nothing like Computex, especially if you're an enthusiast tech, but that's a different topic for a different day. Uh, if you're at the event, let us know what your favorite product was, or if you've been watching the videos, what did you think the coolest thing at CES 2019 was? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And don't forget to hit that like button. But from here on in, there is still one more thing to do in Vegas. And that is challenge the other YouTuber called Christopher Yee, who's actually called me out and wants to do a price performance rundown 
for the best value for money PC you can build. So we're gonna get onto that and we're gonna see how well we can do. Peace out for now, bye.